Hi everyone, welcome back to my home studio. Um, this is my day eight quarantine distraction video. Might be a little bit late with getting it up actually on my eighth day, but forgive me a little bit. I had a lot going on yesterday. So this video is kind of a follow-up to a video that I um, put out a couple weeks ago. I made a video on how to make split rimmed bowls. I had some that were like flower shaped and some that were like squared. And I had some people say, hey, I'd, I'd really like to see how those you know, turn out after you glaze them. So I thought I might as well go ahead and shoot a video on showing how I'm glazing those bowls and a bunch of other bowls. Um, I have uh, bowls that I was making for our local empty bowls uh, fundraiser, which unfortunately is postponed, but we'll still be able to use the bowls whenever uh, we get the date back on the calendar. But um, this video shows how I apply the glazes and the different combinations. And then the next video is a follow-up when I take them out of the kiln. So I hope you pick up some good tips, maybe some good glaze combinations that you might want to try out when you get back to the studio. And uh, I hope you all stay healthy and keep potting. I wanted to sh quickly show how I dip glaze a pot. Um, and all of the pots that I'm showing in this video, I will have dip glazed uh, very similar to this with just different colors. So I happen to be using coyote glazes. This is a, a coyote um, cobalt. And it's a little bit low, but it will work for my purposes. Now, I use, I use dip glazes because I really like uh, the even appearance that I can get with dip glazing. Um, you always want to whisk it up well to make sure that it is well mixed. I know that mine is well mixed because I, I used it earlier. And then I'm going to be using tongs. Now, tongs are designed with four prongs, two prongs that hold the pot on the inside of the wall, two that hold it on the outside of the wall. I'm going to snugly hold it uh, like this. So when I'm gripping and holding, holding the uh, handles tightly, it shouldn't fall out of my hands. Now, because this glaze is a little bit low, I'm going to put it up on its corner, submerge my pot, turn it upside down, and when I turn it upside down, I'm going to shake it pretty vigorously while holding the handles really tightly. Now, the purpose of flipping it upside down is it helps the excess glaze to come up off the rim rather than if I hold it right side up, that excess glaze is going to run down toward the foot and then it kind of pulls down there and it becomes a, a spot where it can really run during uh, firing of the kiln and you don't want it to run all over your um, your shelves or in the case of the way that I fire them with the kids, the patties. So usually, you know, less than a minute, it usually gets to the point where it pretty much stops dripping. Oh, and I, I should have mentioned before, I did previously rinse and I waxed the foot. So that's why the foot, the, the glaze is beating off. It's because I had waxed it. If you fail to wax it, it's not a big deal. You can scrub it, but it takes a lot more effort to get it off. Now, when that stops dripping, then I can take it over and I can set it on the table. I just have a tray right here though. So if I set it on the tray, you have to be aware that you have to um, make the tongs come apart so you don't scratch the glaze off the side of the pot. And this is how I do the first coat of glaze on um, some, of the, some of the pots. I'm going to be doing a couple of coats. So uh, this is the way that I dip glaze real easily. So for starters, uh, these bowls right here, these are going to be cobalt with blue-purple on the rim. Uh, this is going to be a half-and-half half type glaze. It's steel gray chino with chino. And what I actually do is I do it, I dip it as two-thirds. So I dipped two-thirds over here with steel gray chino, and then I'll dip two-thirds with chino. Uh, this is uh, Coyote Texas Two-Step. So it, this is licorice. I dipped all four of these, one dip in li licorice. And then I'm going to do the overcoats on top, the Blue Moon, Marshmallow, and Sea Mist. Um, this next group, this is gonna be black with uh, light chino over it. I'm gonna try that combination. This is gonna be black with desert sage over it. And I'm gonna do gunmetal on the rim. These are lapis and robin's egg. Right now I have the robin's egg. And this is baby blue satin 
uh, with blue purple on the rim. Now this is the robin's egg with lapis. So the the lapis I'm dipping very close up to the rim, you know, at least three quarters, making sure that I'm getting the very bottom there. Um, this is the uh, steel gray chino with the chino, but I have to rub the bubbles out first. And then there's the chino and I dip it about two thirds and two thirds. So I have the third middle section is a nice overlap. And I, have, I had some chunks there on the foot that I was just trying to fix a little bit. Now this one is a brand new bucket of desert sage that I have to mix up with my uh, drill. I have some tendonitis in my elbow. I'm adding a little bit of water. The drill helps to save my uh, arm so it, it's not quite as uncomfortable. And now this is the same uh, desert sage. That was the black bowl dipped in desert sage. Uh, this is robin's egg again. So this is the robin's egg bowl in, inside, lapis outside. And now I'm going to dip the exterior. Now this one, we'll find out in the next video. I actually did dip it too close to the foot. The next one, this one is better because I leave more of the lapis at the bottom. It's a super runny combination. And when I put gun metal on the rim, it makes it even runnier. And then this one is way too deep, which we'll see in the next video as well. I should have left more lapis show at the bottom. And this one is the blue purple. It's one of the Archie Space series. Uh, notice that I have these caution labels for my kids. They only should be putting it over another glaze, like on the rim or on the interior. By itself, they tend to chip. So the Archie's base, just watch out for. So this is blue purple on top of the baby blue satin. It's a real pretty combo. And then this is the Texas two-step. This was a really long process, so I sped it up tremendously. So all of these bowls have the licorice, and then I'm using the blue moon, the sea mist, and the marshmallow over the top. I'm doing about three full layers. Now, I'm all done here, so I'm buffing the bubbles out of, this is the steel gray chino with a chino overlap, and um, I just happen to get a lot of bubbles on that. And then I'm going to clean the foot with a sponge, make, making sure that I really get all the glaze off that. This particular one is the cobalt blue with the blue purple on the rim. Uh, next one, oh, this is the Texas Two Steps. Um, it's a little bit kind of sloppy, but it, it turns out okay. Um, again, about three to four coats. Uh, this one is the Coyote Black with the light chino over it and gunmetal on the rim. Baby blue satin with blue purple on the rim. Uh, this one is probably my favorite of all the combinations. It's black with desert sage over it and uh, the rim in gunmetal. Um, and then this is the robin's egg and the lapis with the overlap. Um, and then the robin's egg was uh, dipped on the exterior and then gunmetal on the very rim. Note again, the one on the left was fine. The one on the right is gonna be too low as we'll see in the next video. So check out the next video for the results.